What's going on guys? I'm a regular guy with the Regular Guy Firearms channel. Thanks for watching. Okay, so today is going to be a rather short review because it's on a piece of gear that has just been on my guns forever. Um, what it is, is the Magpul ASAP sling mount. Okay. Um, I've had this guy for years and it has been beaten to complete shit. Um, the finish on it, uh, you'll get a close-up of it. The finish on it is totally fucked. There's lots of surface rust on it. There will be a more focused view on it later. But let's go ahead and, and talk about why we use sling mounts and stuff like that and why we place them in certain areas. Now, as far as um, sling mounts and shit like that are concerned, generally speaking, uh, I, I don't get complicated with it. Um, but there are a couple of things that I look for. There are a couple of things that I require out of a, uh, sling mount. And one is it, it's gotta be versatile, meaning I have to be able to put several different types of slings out there. And I understand that sling mounts don't take everything all the time, but I need it to be as versatile as possible. Um, the second is that I need movement. Um, wherever I want the gun to go is wherever it needs to be. So... There's a lot of different rigs out there, and there's a lot of different sling setups that are out there. But as far as they go, the uh, the ASP runs uh, the most effective for me. Uh, QD sling mounts, they work okay. Um, I'm just going to get that out of the way right now. Uh, QD sling mounts do work okay, but here, here's the problem that I have with them. Um, a lot of times there is... Uh, limited movement in those and uh, the problem with QD uh, slings and QD sling mounts and stuff like that is that the problem is is that they tend to do their job a little too well meaning things tend to quickly detach inadvertently um, it's either an exterior thing or an environmental thing where you just touch the portion of the QD sling that come that takes it off the gun. And there are a lot of times where I'd see dudes going into transitions and stuff and for some reason or another they may inadvertently touch it or something, but and it's usually up here, but it just comes detached and the gun falls to the ground. Okay. But I mean it's not really that big of a deal if you're extra careful you can get away from that type of stuff. So that's really why I steer away from that type of thing. So, if I'm using like a Magpul MS3 or the current sling that I have on there or something from Blue Force or various other slings on out there that are actually the majority that hook onto things, the ASAP sling mount actually works and it's the most versatile. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to go to a close-up view of it and we're going to talk about a couple of things on the uh, sling mount itself. So, here we go. Okay, so, as far as the whole sling mount and stuff like that is concerned, um, here's the thing. The finish that was originally on there is just not there anymore. Um, what, it been, what it had actually been replaced with is either layers of freaking Rust-Oleum paint or surface rust, as you can actually pretty clearly see. Okay, the, the surface rust itself is rather uh, subtle because... The sling is used often, and it and it just rolls back and forth and shaves it off. So, you know, there's really not that much to, to go over other than the fact that, hey man, it works. Now, as far as installing it is concerned, it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, the plate itself is here, okay? There's going to be one of two different spacers in there for a commercial or a mil-spec plate, so you're going to have to... Uh, use the one that works for your gun and really all it is is taking a uh, castle nut wrench to this backing this off if you have a new rifle then it's going to be it's going to be staked and it's going to be a little bit more difficult but what can i say other than hang tough you back this off take the old plate off watch this spring that holds this pin in because there's a spring and detent that hold all this in that your uh that your end plate keeps on. So when you back this off with a castle nut and bring it out of there, 
you're going to want to pay attention and keep the spring and or detent from falling out. You don't want either one of those to leave the gun for obvious reasons. Um, and the obvious reasons are this. Uh, your rear pin is captured. It's captured by a detent that's held in place by a spring. That spring keeps pressure on it so that when um, you pull your pin out, it retains it and there's enough spring pressure pushing on the detent to keep the pin in place and to keep your uh, takedown pin from falling out. Okay, so you want to pay attention to that when you take it apart. But other than that, guys, really that's it. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions on sling mounts and stuff for a little while now, so I figured I'd just answer it with this question. So, literally that's it. The Magpul ASAP sling mount, the older one, is the one I would personally recommend for the reasons stated. So really that's it. Um, the installation is pretty straightforward. There's a bunch of different YouTube videos out there. If the requests are high enough, yes, I'll do a video on installing one of these. But really that's, that's the whole thing. So, what I'm going to talk about now are a couple of channel updates and things that are, that are coming up as far as just testing and everything else. Um, my buddy Trevor um, is friends with the dude that owns Armorware, right? So this is what happened. He sent me out a couple of plates, and I'm going to do um, testing on those. And what better way to do it than to shoot them, okay? And there's going to be a couple of things that happen with those plates. They're going to be shot at uh, CQB distances, a good CQB distance, like seven yards, okay? Um, which is honestly like medium range inside of a house. And uh, that's going to be neat. He also sent me uh, one of their latest and greatest whiz -bang carriers, or play carriers. And so I'm going to download all, pretty much all the stuff off of my current carrier. I'm going to put it on that one, and I'm going to start testing it. And that'll, it'll be a few months at least before I put out a review on that, because as you guys know, I like to uh, really test my gear. And the final is this, uh, as far as immediate things are concerned. You may have noticed that on my AR, it's missing the Aimpoint T1 on there. Well, there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is this guy. Okay. Um, fan of the channel. A fan of the channel. Uh, his name's Tyson. He decided that he was going to go ahead and lend me one of these guns um, for reviewing purposes. Now, this is his personal gun, and I'm, and still I'm not going to pull any punches on it. The goal is to put 10,000 rounds through this gun before I actually do a legit review on it. Uh, I'm going to start with a post-10,000 rounds review, but I figured I'd give him a quick shout out because he just, he just messaged me one day on Facebook, and he's like, hey man, I... I I dig what you do. Have you ever considered doing a review on the Tavor? And from the comments that I get on YouTube, I told him, dude, only all the fucking time I get reviews on a, I get requests on a regular basis for the Tavor. So yes, I would absolutely like to. And then he just immediately was just kind of like, well, I'll send you one. So that made my fucking week uh, by that alone, and here it is. Okay, so I got a Tavor in 5.56. I'm going to shoot the crap out of this thing, and I'm going to give you guys a solid review, as I normally do. So, as far as channel updates are concerned, that's pretty much where we're at right now. Um, sorry that there haven't been a lot of whiz-bang, tactical, fucking videos lately uh, of me shooting stuff, but it's because there's other things in the works that take a little bit of time, this being one of them. So that's it, guys. If you got any questions about anything else, drop it in the comments box below. If you had an idea for a video that you wanted um, me to do, and I said that I was going to do it, but didn't, chances are I forgot. So go ahead and throw that idea in the comments box below. You'll know who you are. Um, and if you want to take this discussion a little bit further, go ahead and jump on our Facebook page. There's a little over 10,000 guys on there, so yay. Um, read the about before you join us, and if you have a question that you think might be a common one, use the search function on the page, and chances are there will be thread after thread after thread of um, just conversations already answering your questions. Okay, 
so just help us out, okay, because it, it gets furballed a little bit with, re with repeated questions. But other than that, guys, I appreciate all the support. Oh, last thing. People have been asking me about this friggin' shirt, okay, because I've worn it a bunch, and people will friggin' love it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to get a chair to stand on real quick so that you can see it all the way, okay? This is the Fuck Feinstein shirt. This shirt is from a friend of mine that started his own little apparel company. It's called 2AR Clothing Co. Okay, I'll leave a link for that in the description below as, as well as other things. Um, run out there, support him. When you buy stuff from him, tell him that I sent you because I want him to know it's me. He sent, he sent me free shirts and stuff, and he sent me stuff while I was deployed and everything else. So he's a good guy. Um, I highly recommend his shirts because, one, they're funny and they're awesome. So, now that all that's out of the way, remember guys, regular guys, the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.